So there's a few things that marketing actually excel at compared to other networking vendors. And this video is going to showcase some of these powerful tools that you can use to access your marketing devices. I really love this. We'll be looking at stuff like the marketing identity. We'll be looking at the IP neighbors that you can use in order to discover what's happening on the network or basically to map out your network. And we'll also be looking at a powerful overlay management network that you can configure where you can basically connect to any marketing that's participating in this application so that you can manage devices that are very far away without even having to use an IP address. So that is going to be really cool. And I really wanted to put all three of these things together in one video because they all kind of just gel so well together. It, I could probably have made separate videos for each little one, but I really think it's, it's more powerful to see everything in one demonstration so that you can kind of get it and see why this is so cool. So I'm gonna jump into a lab and just showcase everything, explain everything on the go. I hope you enjoy. So here we've got a nice topology in EVNG that we can use to learn more about stuff like the identity, IP neighbors, and Roman. So specifically IP neighbors, why is it so important? Well, I think it is kind of common sense that we as administrators need to know what equipment we're on at the moment because it can get very confusing the bigger our networks get if we are just managing a single or two routers or something then maybe it's not as confusing but if you start working with 10 or 20 or 50 or 100 or even a thousand different devices you maybe want to know exactly which device you're currently on and this is where router identity comes in and saves the day because when you log on to a device winbox will show you which device that is but also this IP or this identity information can get sent out to different marketics or even to Winbox using the marketing networking discovery protocol or MNDP, which we'll cover a little bit more in the IP neighbor section of this video. But I just want you to understand if I open up Winbox and I look at my identities, at the moment I've got two devices. I've got my physical marketing, my actual marketing on my table that I use to connect and be on the internet with. And then I've got a CHR in EVNG, which is this site A microtech, if we look there. Now we can see both of these devices, their identities are just microtech at the moment. And this is fine since I know exactly which device is which at the moment, but it's good to see that we are able to learn exactly what the identities are. And then if we want to configure a different identity, it's as easy as just logging onto your microtech. So let me quickly connect. And let's set an identity. So if I go into my system settings and I go into identity, I can now change the identity to whatever I want it to be. So maybe I want this to be site underscore A. And once I hit on apply or OK, I can see immediately on my Winbox session, it has changed it to the site A microtech. And also if I open up a new Winbox session and I look at my neighbors, I will instantly see that the identity that I learn is the site A microtech. Now this is extremely useful if I'm working in a large microtech environment and I'm connecting onto a switch because now I can exactly see which microtechs I've learned in my IP neighbors and I can quickly connect to them and just manage them properly from this list actually. So that is really powerful. But this is where it comes into play with this IP neighbor section, which we're going to talk about now. If I go back onto my microtech, and I look at IP and I go to the neighbors options, we can actually see we're able to learn any remote microtech devices information inside of something again known as the microtech network discovery protocol or MNDP. You can think of this as microtech sprinkle when it comes to LLDP or even CDP because as crazy as it is on microtech it's actually running all three of those different protocols as IP discovery protocols as, or IP neighbor discovery protocols. I shouldn't say IP because it's actually operating at layer two. It's there to learn MAC addresses really. It's able to see what it, what device it is, what the board name is. If, is it a CHR? Is it an AX3? Is it an RB5009? Is it a CCR? It's able to get all of that information, even sees what version of router S it's running, what the identity is. Again, this is so powerful because now we know exactly which, what the remote marketing's name is. And it will even show you on which interface it's learned it from. Is it Ether 12? Is it Ether 1? Is it Ether 2? Which interface? It could even be a VLAN, just for your information. And then if there is any IP address bound on that interface of the remote device, it will even tell you what that IP address is. That is really powerful and neat. And what's cool from this IP neighbor list you can actually use this to connect to remote marketing as well. If I'm on Winbox and I right click on one of these devices, even though there's only the one now, 
I can do stuff like ping, which will ping that IP address if there is one. And you can even telnet, so it can telnet directly if there is an IP and telnet is being allowed. But more importantly, it's able to do stuff like MAC ping and MAC telnets, which Microtix tend to allow by default, so that you can see if you can MAC ping that MAC address of that device and see if there is actually some type of communication. And then if it and if there is some communication, then obviously I can even do a MAC telnet. So if I connect onto this Microtik, I actually know that this is going to be the site B Microtik, and its name is also just Microtik. So let's quickly set the site B Microtik as well. Let's set its identity. So let's do a system identity set name site underscore B. And when I hit enter, if I go back onto the IP neighbor field, there we can see the identity as updated in real time and I know exactly which Microtik I'm working on. I'm just quickly going to add identities on all of the other Microtiks quickly. Perfect. So now that I've set all of the identities and we kind of know what IP neighbors are, there's one more thing that I actually want to show you inside IP neighbors, and that is that you can actually also limit exactly what is being done inside IP neighbors. So if we go into our discovery settings, we can actually set exactly which interfaces we're allowing IP neighbors to run on. So by static, it kind of just means any interfaces that are integrated on this microtik so ether one two three four five you can think of all of those as static interfaces you can also set it to run on none of the interfaces so that means it just won't run so it, it, it's great for security purposes because maybe you don't want somebody else that has a microtik that's connecting to your microtik to be able to snoop some information off you uh, but you can also do stuff like set it to all or dynamic. There's so many different options that you have here. But if you just leave it on the basic static, that's fine. That shouldn't be an issue. You can also even set what the discovery interval is. And that's just kind of like every 30 seconds, it will check and see if any new devices are participating. And here we can see there's a lot of LLDP metrics or options that we can configure or set. Uh, LLDP, again, this is more or less the industry standard, and you'll see this a lot if you come from something like an Aruba or HPE world, because LLDP is used a lot there. Then we can see the different protocols that are set to run, so CDP, LLDP, and MNDP. Now, if you don't want to use any of the protocols, it's as easy as just deselecting them. So let's say I don't want to use CDP, I can just tick it or untick it. Same with LLDP, untick it. And now I can just learn Microtik stuff. But I tend to leave everything on because I like seeing if somebody connects in and I pick up, they've connected to my device and I'm learning their information. I'm like, gotcha, I can see what you're doing. I, I found you out. So that is some of the awesome stuff that we can do with the discovery settings. Now let's step, take it a step further. If I go back to this topology, how would I be able to connect to site E to manage it without using an IP address at all. I mean, I know I can use Winbox to connect to MAC addresses, but can I just use this device's remote MAC address to connect to it? Well, kind of, but you do need to enable something known as the Romon, or I think it's like Router Overlay Management Network something something. <laughs> the exact name escapes me now. But basically it's an overlay network that you can configure on top of your Microtix in order to connect to remote devices using their MAC addresses via Romon. It's really, really awesome. And you use Winbox to facilitate all this. So you'll use Winbox to connect to a Microtik that has Romon running and is able to show you what all of its Romon neighbors are or devices that's participating in Romon. And then you can connect to any of those devices to manage them. It's really, really such a powerful and interesting and cool tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enable Romon on my site a Microtik. I'm actually going to enable them on all of the Microtiks. However, if you were just using some basic switches between site B, C, and D, and it was just forwarding multicast and broadcast frames and stuff like that, then this will work just fine as well. But I've got a bunch of Microtiks here, so I'm going to have to enable Romon on everything. But you'll see how cool this is in a second. So first thing I want to do is just get onto my site a Microtik. And from the site A Microtik, if I want to enable Romon, it's actually as quick and easy as just clicking on Tools, going to Romon, and if I just tick Enable and I hit Apply, it will actually start running Romon. Now that's really, really awesome. And one thing that you should know is 
when we do click apply, it's actually going to take the Microtix MAC address and just populate it in the ID. You can actually set your ID statically if you want to. And you can also set a secret. It's just an MD5 hash to just add additional security for Roman so you don't accidentally get some weird people connecting also on the management network side of things. But if it's a pretty tight sealed network and nobody else is going to get onto it, then you can also just leave the secrets blank. But people tend to like to just use it. So let's just set a secret as secret. And let me apply that. So now we know I have a Microtech. It is running Roman and is it actually doing anything? So let's quickly see. The, the quickest way to do this is also just to enable Ramon on another device. And let's say, let, let me just add it on the site eMicrotech. And I'll do this quickly from the command line because it is really fast to do. So I could just type in tool Ramon set enabled, yes. And let's just set our secret to secret. I'm just going to copy this and I'll hit enter. And once I've done that, if I go back to the site A Microtech and I look at my Romon stuff, so tools, Romon, you can actually do a discovery to see if it picks up any Romon devices on the network. So I'm running the Romon discovery here and let's see, is it actually seeing anything? And it's not picking anything up. And the reason for that is because these Microtechs aren't switching traffic effectively. They're still acting as routers. So I'm just going to have to enable Romon on them quickly. So let's do that. Let me log on to each Microtech and admin blank, no password. And I'll just paste that in and I'll do this for all of the other Microtechs quickly. And the last Microtech. And once that's been done, if I go back to the Winbox session, I can actually see immediately there has some discovery happened. And we can see we're actually learning the remote devices identities. We're learning what versions of router S they're running. We're learning the path, which is very important because this kind of works a lot like RIP. It works a lot like a routing protocol as well. It's able to figure out how many hops it's going to take to get to that remote host or that remote microtech. It can see what the path is. And in this case, it's using a MAC address to map out that path. Think of that as the next hop IP address almost. And then the cost, it is effectively adding a cost of 100, but it's adding it on both ends of the interfaces. And it does kind of what OSPF does. It, it has a cost associated with it. So it can see, hey, it's going to take me a cost of 200 to get to this path or a cost of 400. But I want you to understand these are all individual microtics. So I've got a site B, site C, site D, and site E microtech. And it's just showing me effectively how long it's going to take me to get to the site E microtech, which is really, really cool. And I can just stop that. You can even do stuff like run a ping. And this is where you can take the ID of a remote Microtech. I, I'm not sure if you can copy it from here. Apparently not. Actually, let's quickly type it out. It's really not too bad. So 50 colon 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 zero two zero 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 b Let's see what happens if we run this type of ping. And we can see it's just getting a bit of a reply. So it's just kind of showing you that it's working. But it's the same as doing a Mac ping, really, if we think about it. So that is it in a nutshell or in essence. I also just want to show you what you can do with the port configuration from the Roman settings. And this works similarly to the IP neighbors port setting stuff. So if in essence, what you could do is here we can see there's a base configuration where it's configured Roman on all interfaces and it's enabled and it's got a cost of 100. So if you want to tweak some stuff, maybe you want to remove or only add specific interfaces. Uh, to Roman, then you could do that. You could select exactly which interface. So let's say I don't want Ether 12 to participate in Roman, so I can click on that and forbid it. That might be useful for something like a WAN interface specifically, but maybe your management network, you still want to be able to participate over, over Roman. That's where you kind of want to tweak these settings. So let's actually see how we can use Winbox to connect to that remote Microtik, which was that Microtik or site e Microtech, which you could think of, it could have been many different offices away. It could have been a different data center, or it could have been a different point, point of presence. It could be so far away. So let's see if I can connect to that just using Roman without an IP address. And really, this, this is kind of where Microtech is so cool, where it excels so much for me. So here I can see my site I, a Microtech. I'm just going to use its MAC address to connect, and I'm going to connect on Roman or connect to Roman. And this, in essence, connects onto that Roman 
information base almost. It's kind of like connecting into the OSPF database almost. So now we can see our addresses and I said, hey, I want to see, can I connect onto the site eMicrotech? And remember, these devices don't have any IPs configured on them. This is all being done over this management overlay network over layer two. So let me connect to the site eMicrotech and I'm connecting and Bob's your uncle. I'm on the site eMicrotech. It doesn't have any config. It doesn't have any IP but I'm using Winbox and configuring it or managing it like any other Microtech. And this is really, really, really such a powerful and awesome way to be able to get your devices. I really think this sets Microtech so far apart from the rest of the competition because it's such a unique and interesting way of managing your devices. Not just the ROM on component, but the reason that you can connect to devices over their MAC addresses, over layer two. This takes away the need for stuff like rollover cables, even though it's still nice and probably necessary to have but it helps in so many different ways to just get additional access because I can tell you there's so many times I've struggled because of some layer three misconfiguration to get back onto a device and your marketing just kind of get you back on there. <laughs> it's really, really awesome. So this is where I'm going to end off the video. I think I've shown you exactly what the router identity does, what the IP neighbor does in our use case, as well as why Romon is so powerful and how all of this just glues together. It all works together. It kind of, this, this is why I wanted to make this one solid video instead of chopping this up into three little parts, because this actually showcases how these things just flow together. I hope you've enjoyed watching the video. I hope you've learned something new and I'll catch you in the next video soon. See ya.